Hey friends, happy Saturday, happy weekend. Welcome to my live. And if you happen to be watching later, welcome to the replay. My name is Robin and I'm with Robin's A Blue Creations. And I'm also an independent designer with Chalk Couture. I'd like to welcome you to my live this morning. And if you happen to be watching later, welcome to the replay. Once you hop on either the live or the replay, say hi in the comments. Tell me where you're watching from. If you do happen to catch the replay, if you wouldn't mind um, typing in hashtag replay, that lets me know that you have hopped on at a later date. Um, I also want to let you know I'm live in three locations this morning. So if you hear me refer to a comment that you don't see in your comment feed, that person may be viewing and commenting from a different platform. Also, if you are catching me from my private Facebook group, um, there is a permission link in the description of the video. That just allows StreamYard to pin your profile name and pick to your comment. It's your choice whether you want to click that link or not. But if you choose not to, just know that your comment will show up as Facebook user in my comments and I won't know who to say hi to. Also, my camera is still doing that flickering thing. I'm not for sure what it is. I think it might be my um, Logi Capture software, but I'm not for sure. Um, so just bear with me. But for the most part, we'll be... Uh, using the top-down camera today, so it shouldn't be too terribly much of an issue. With that, let's say hi, and I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera. I see that, J oops, Jason is watching from the other side of the door. Um, again, once you hop on, say hi in the comments. I'm quickly going to also pull up my group. That way, if there's anybody hopping on there, I can see who that is. Turn my volume down. Okay. So I'm just going to pop that up there. Okay. So today we are using the size C Honeybee Farm transfer. So this is a reusable silk screen transfer. It is adhesive backed. These are, again, reusable about 8 to 12 times, depending on how well you take care of them. So I'm just searching for a Sharpie marker. I must have not put it away where it goes. I don't know, my paintbrushes are falling out. Oh, no. Hmm, I don't know what I did with it. Oh, Sharpie. Let's just see if the pen will work. Okay, so because these are reusable, I want to make sure that I note the back side of the carrier sheet. That way when I am done cleaning it and I'm ready to put it on the backer sheet and store away, I know that the transfer goes on this side and not the other side. And real quickly, if you get a transfer with a big black sticker on it and it's a lighter color like this, the sticker says that the copyright information down here in the corner the copyright information that's always in the left hand bottom corner of each transfer the this particular manufacturer makes those as a silk screen so that's very small silk screen um, it's a very small silk screen area so i want to cover that up because i do not want that to transfer onto my wooden surface I might get lucky and be able to get it off, but I don't want to chance it. Okay, so we're doing a uh, stencil mashup today. So we are using this Chocotour, again, Honeybee Farm Transfer. It is a size C. I believe it's $24.99. And then we're also going to be using this. It's called Penny Tile. It's a reusable Mylar stencil from Essential Stencil, but it re reminds me um, a lot of Honeycomb. It also kind of looks like chicken wire, but we're going to pretend that it's Honeycomb today. And so we'll be using both of those on this faux palette board that I created from five gallon paint sticks. So I'm going to flip it over so you can see the back side. So I believe this is 12. Yep, this is five, 12 five gallon paint sticks, and then I just brace them with two additional paint sticks that I have cut down. I just wood glue them together, let them sit overnight, and I have not painted the backside yet, but I will. 
I'm one of those that likes to paint the back side. And so what I have done is I taped off diagonally. Um, and I'm, we're doing kind of a diagonal color block today. So I used on the bottom, I used this Waverly paint in the maize color. And on the top, I used the Waverly antique wax. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the penny tile or the honeycomb on the bottom portion. And then I'm going to chalk over that in white with the honeybee farm transfer. And then we may or may not do a bow. I haven't quite decided yet. So with that, let's, so we'll do the stenciling first. <coughs> and I'm just going to use we're just going to use all the products today. So we used Waverly paints before. Now we're going to switch over and do folk, use the folk art chalk paint. But you can use acrylic paint. You could even use black chalk paste. But I have so much paint that I need to use up. So that is what we are using today. Hello, Bonita. You are just fine. Welcome. So I'm going to pour out, maybe a little bit of black chalk paint. So I don't know when you hopped on Bonita, but we're going to be using this essential stencil penny tile um, stencil down on the bottom to kind of mimic <coughs> honeycomb. And then I'm going to put the honeybee farm kind of in the middle in white on both of them or on, on both sections. So I need to get out a little bit of paint. So I'm just, I just have a little piece of paper here. Let's move this over just a skosh. I'm just going to get, pour a little bit out. I may not need, this stuff is thick. Maybe more than I'll ever need. Okay, so now I have my paint. I have a few little sections of shop towel. I have my stencil brush, brush from Essential Stencil. And I'm just going to dip it into the chalk paint, rub it off a little bit, and then get the rest off on a paper towel. You want a fairly dry paintbrush because the key to Mylar stencils is lot multiple light coats. And so I'm going to put a few pieces of tape down so she doesn't move. I'm just going to try to even it up a little bit. And then we'll have to go back and fill in. Actually, I wonder if it would behoove me. I'll just do it this way. I think it's less to fill in that way. Okay, so I'm going to tape it up here. And then I'm going to tape it down here. Let's see. Push that up a little bit. You can see most of that, so that's good. Okay, so let's get our paintbrush. And you're just going to kind of use a circular motion and fill in except for I probably before I get too far I should probably mark that off a little bit because I because I just want the honeycomb on the yellow part Um, I'm just gonna take that off. I think I can. I think I can line it back up pretty well. Because I could probably have managed to do it successfully, but I didn't. I didn't want to. Okay, so now I just need to line that back up. Okay. 
Ooh, easier said than done. No, I can't find my lines. Huh. Oh, yeah, I gotta stand up. I boo booed. Sorry, you're gonna see my head a little bit. There. I think that works. not hopefully some of our other design will cover that up okay so let's start over a little bit actually because it's so thin I'm actually just gonna stipple it because I noticed I'm not getting very good coverage smaller paintbrush and see if that helps. Much better. So I'm just kind of swirling it. Getting a good arm workout. Jason remembers when the dry brush method was created. I used, we used to dry brush a lot in ceramics. You would... Um, paint your whole piece like a black color and then you'd go back in and you'd literally dry brush everything on all the color you would dry brush the color on kind of gave it that vintage antique kind of look and that was back when I was in elementary school oh gosh this hurts mm -hmm. Gonna kind of take a little peeky. There we go. Sneaky little peeky. Right up here where I used way too much paint. There's a little bit of bleeding, but not much. I used way too much paint when I got this little paintbrush out. And I might have just done it again. I love mixing my mediums like this, like um, my silk screen transfers with my Mylar stencils. These are just as easy to clean as the Chaka Tour transfers, just a little bit of warm water. And I actually like to use the board erasers on these as well. Sometimes a little bit of dish soap helps too. Hey, Melissa from Junk and Craft Treasures. How are you this morning? Uh, Jason says, okay, maybe not when it was created. Guess it was not when it got hot. You were there when it got hot at Hobby Lobby, when the dry brushing and stenciling technique got hot at Hobby Lobby. So most of, I don't know, probably most of you don't know kind of our story. We're kind of a Hobby Lobby family, Jason and his dad more so than me. But, oh, thanks, Melissa, for sprinkling it out. 
and you could have stayed on your biz page, page I didn't mind. Um, so Jason and his dad worked for Hobby Lobby for a long time. Jason started working there when he was 17. I think he started a few months after his dad did. Um, and so as a manager, they like to move you around. And so Jason and his family moved from Oklahoma City to Wichita and then from Wichita to Topeka. Um, and then Jason in his early 20s got the opportunity to co-manage at Lawrence, which is actually where I was working at the time while I was in college. And I remember the day first, his first day very well because it was literally love at first sight for me. So there's our little sneaky peeky. <sighs> Melissa says it flips back and forth on her. So if you have not checked out Melissa's channel, she is from Junk and Craft Treasure. And she does some fabulous, beautiful projects. She is an essential stencil ambassador. She has a mystery craft box subscription. And I love when she does salt wash projects. <laughs> so back to the Hobby Lobby story so it was love at first sight for me I even remember dragging my friend Tanya back into the store that night I said you've got to check this guy out he's so good looking and then I actually quit working there um, and then happened to go in there one day before the 4th of July. It was probably the night before or the weekend of. I decided to do a 4th of July project. And surprise, surprise, I don't think I ever even started that project. And I probably still have the supplies to make it. Um, but after that, he asked me out and pretty much was history after that. Okay, so I'm trying to line this up. It's easier said than done. Okay, so I'm going to move this one over. Try. Melissa says she's glad she caught me today. She, oh, yeah, you're having a relaxing day, and she says she loves that story. And I just heard Jason laughing, so he'll have to tell us all while, while he, why he's laughing. Okay, this is harder than I thought to line it up. Well, we're just going to have to go with that. Actually, I'm going to go a couple over, see if I can get more opportunities to line it up. That's much easier. There we go. I think. There. Okay, and hopefully that's dry. So let's finish this up. And then I know I need to go back and piece up that piece, make, uh, fix that piece. Okay, so just finish swirling. I hope, I don't know if I got this quite lined up, but. We'll give it a whirl. Oh, yeah. If you guys haven't, go check out Chick-fil-A's post today. They're introducing a new uh, shake flavor. I saw that earlier today, and I meant to show that to Jason. I don't want to spoil it, but of course he may have. Oh, he did. He already spoiled it for everybody. They introduced the Chick-fil-A sauce milkshake today for April Fool's Day. Okay. 
So Melissa, did I read right that the essential stencil stencil of the month club shop is totally reducing their inventory? So are they not going to have the shop anymore? Oh, Cheryl says she'd try it. Oh, well, I don't know. Of course, you. I think you guys like to try anything. You, you and Jason seem pretty ambitious. Okay, so I'm still just stenciling away down here, trying to get all this honeycomb filled in. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Getting quite the arm work out here just the shop. So if, if any of you haven't heard about Essential Stencil, they make these wonderful Mylar stencils that are reusable um, infinity times. Um, and they have a stencil of the month club where it's kind of subscription based and they have a lot of great, in fact, I think this one may have been in one of those extra things that was offered. This was came in a like a background bundle, I think. But they used to have a shop, but I think they're closing the so you could order from past subscriptions that you may not have gotten. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I just need to do a little bit of more piecing like right here, but let's dry that first, make sure it's all good and dry. Uh, Bonita says, oh, Cheryl says she's more ambitious than her husband. They like to try everything. I think they've, have you tried that mac and cheese ice cream? And then there was a new Hidden Valley Ranch ice cream at Walmart. Uh, so Cheryl says she's a little more ambitious. Bonita says, um, no. Um, so oh, not no, but heck no. Melissa agrees with Bonita. Thanks, Melissa. I don't know why I made this palette sign so big, but I was struggling to come up with what I wanted to put on it. And then I, I was originally going to do a yellow band down here and then a yellow band up there. But straight lines are sometimes really hard to get. So I thought, well, heck, well, heck with that. I'll just do diagonal. And then it doesn't matter if it's even or not. <laughs> Nobody knows. Cheryl says she draws the, the line at Ranch Ice Cream. Well, that Matt Miller, he tried it. He did not like it. He was not a fan. Okay, I just need to finish up a little bit on this end, and then I promise we're getting to the transfer soon. Ooh, and I just messed all that up. The transfer should go pretty quick. Okay, so let's do just this little bit over here. How much do I need to do? Like barely a line. That works for me. So then we just need to get up top here. And I've discovered it's easier to line it up the more of the design you line up the easier it is so like earlier I was just trying to line up one section like one line of honeycomb and that was like almost impossible almost like an M.C. Escher painting. Okay. So we just need a little bit. 
balderdash. There. I think it moved on me more than once. Okay, so we just need from like here up. It's not perfectly lined up, but and I probably just screwed it all up. You know, it looks great until that very last corner. Nope, it's good. Okay, so I'll just, later I'll take this to my utility sink and I'll just run it under some warm water, a little bit of um, dish soap if needed. I'm just going to figure out where I want to put it. And, and I usually use the Chalk Couture board erasers on those and then they turn out fine. Let's put this paint back in. I can use it for another project. Okay, let's fold that up. Um, put these over there carefully. So I have one little tiny right there, but it's not it's not terribly noticeable, but that's where I used too much paint when I switched to the smaller brush. I got in a wee bit of a hurry and used too much paint. That looks like honeycomb, doesn't it? Also looks like chicken wire, but we're going to pretend that it's honeycomb. So now we can pull this off because we don't need it anymore. So then we can bring in our fuzz cloth and our bee transfer. So again, this is the honeybee farm size C transfer. I've written the name on the back because this is reusable and I want to make sure I get it put on the right side of the backer sheet. And it's a larger transfer, so I pulled the backer sheet away from the transfer. That way I'm less likely to have it fold up on itself. And I'm just going to fuzz it a few times. I'm going to do the same thing with my towel. I'm going to pull it off of the transfer that way I'm not flinging my transfer all over and possibly getting it folded up on itself. Which that's not the end of the world if that happens. Uh, Jason says it looks just like honeycomb. Melissa says you are so neat when you make your things. We're going to clean the craft room today. I try to be neat otherwise because I have so much crud laying around that... If I'm not neat, then I end up wearing it and it ends up everywhere. But if you saw the rest of my craft room, you would see that I'm not really, I mean, this little area is neat. That whole area out there, not so neat. Ugh. I have too much stuff and not enough places to store it so then things get piled up because I get lazy and don't want to dig things out to put things away and I have my pilot's license so I pile things here and I pile things there Ugh, I've got lint all over ah. Okay, so let's see if we can get this put on there before I end up with it up as a wadded mess. In fact, I think it's a little sticky still. Melissa says that sounds like me. 
you're going to move some things out today. Well, we are again in the process of still moving my craft room to the other side of the basement where the other unfinished storage is. It has a few more outlets. The one I'm in only has one outlet. And I'm probably being very dangerous with the uh, um, surge protector situation I got going on. Okay, so I'm just lining up this side of the banner with the other side of the banner on the other side. I've got right sides together so it doesn't stick. And I'm just going to put a pinch in the transfer with my left thumb. That way I know roughly where the middle is. And I have 12 um, boards. So I know that this right here, this seam between these two um, paint sticks is roughly, mostly my center. And now I just have to figure out kind of where I want it. Um, I could get, do I want it centered in the board? Do I want it lower to accommodate a bow? So that's about five and a quarter. And that's seven, I think. I'm not for sure I want a bow. I brought out ribbon. And do I want my bow down here? Do I want my bow down there? I'd like to put as much, I probably made too big of a diagonal, but I don't know. I don't know where I want my bow. I probably should have made less of a diagonal. I guess it doesn't really matter. I think I'll just put it here. So I'm going to burnish it. I'll have probably have a few little bleeds just because some of my boards are uneven. Like I know I have a big gap here at this one. So if I can get that burnished down pretty good. Like this board sits up a little higher than this board. It's just the way it happens between the glue and the paint. Okay, so I'm just going to go one, kind of a one and done color. I have white and I have, this is the current angled squeegee. I'm not as fond of this style as I am the old style, but both of these are thick and they're stiff, more stiff than than these transfers. So when you want to push and pull a lot of paste around in a quick amount of time, these angled squeegees are fantastic for that. Um, you could also get out, and I, this isn't the newest one, but we have a four inch squeegee as well, which I thought I had one, but of the new one. I don't use it very often, but I do like these angled squeegees a lot. So I'm just going to put my squeegee into my bright white paste. And because it moves a lot of paste super quick. And right here where I have this gap, I'm going to try to be a little bit more gentler. I'm going to try to get all my squeegee lines out. I'm just going to do that top section real quick. And I'm going to pull that gently. Oh. Hopefully it doesn't pull up all my paint. I probably should have waxed, but I didn't think about that.
and this is super distressed so that's it's not me missing spots it's actually how the transfer is designed so don't be alarmed since half of your letters look like they're missing that was how the transfer was designed I'm not totally going to dry that, so I'm just going to gently lay it back down. I'm going to burnish here where this portion of the design still needs to be pasted. And I'm just going to grab some more. get almost the whole design in one fell swoop. Oops, forgot about that. It moved they these things move a lot of paste fairly quickly. Pick up some of this excess and bring it over here. So let's go back and clean up some of this because those squeegee lines will dry in your design if you don't. Melissa says she loves this. You're making me want to make a B sign today instead of cleaning the craft room. I know I love this transfer and I love B stuff. I'm just ready for spring. So I can kind of see my honeycomb underneath this, but I'm not terribly worried about that. That's partly where the, if I would have banded it at the top and the bottom and left the design just on the stain part, but I kind of like this too. Well, maybe Melissa, you should just kind of set a timer for 30 minutes and then you can clean during the timer. And then after the timer goes off, you can craft a little bit, be creative for a little bit. That's probably what I should start doing. I think this also would have looked pretty if um, in storm. And actually, if I were going to do it again, I would probably double it. Like you could do storm first to kind of act as your primer, your primed um, coat, your primer coat. And that would have blocked out a lot of that background honeycomb design. Um, and then go back over it and stencil it in white or, or uh, use white paste. Uh, I didn't think about that. I can always go back over this again with a second coat of white once this one dries and I clean the transfer. I might be able to do that later. And that will help block out more of that background pattern. So what do you guys think? Should I do bow, no bow, just some twine wrapped around the top with some farmhouse beads? Sometimes less is more. <laughs> Melissa says, oh, she can clean and then mess it back up. Uh, what kind of bow? Well, after, let me pull this off and then I'll show you what I had. 
pick what ribbon I had in my stash. I had a little tiny right there where my seam was. Let's just lay that there for right now. Let's put the lid on. Uh, Jason says he just likes twine with beads. So let's dry this real quick. It actually stands out a little more on the camera than it does in person, but that's because the camera is a lot more forgiving. So here it is up close. It's really cute. Like it. Okay, so here is some ribbon I had from my stash. So it's the white honeycomb and then the black, yellow, and kind of burlap um, polka dots. And then I was going to add burlap to it. So I could make like a messy bow. I could do a loopy bow. I could put some thick twine wrapped around it. Let's see if I where all my twine is. Or I could just do a twine bow with some beads up here. I don't know. I kind of like just keeping it simple with a twine bow and then some farmhouse bead dangles. This might be a little foofy for what I'm going for. So I'll let you guys kind of talk amongst yourselves. Um, but let's, I do definitely want to wrap this up here and it kind of helps hide the fact that I used paint sticks <laughs> Melissa says simple I'm just going to tie a knot. Don't pull too hard because you may snap your whole, you'll compress these together and you might snap your glue apart. So I'm going to try to hold that down while I tighten my bow. And then when I do, I kind of like to, oh, I don't think I got it very tight. So I'll spread these out quite a bit. And then I, to keep my bow from shifting back and forth like that, I put one tail under going down and one tail under going up. And then I tie that together again. And then it keeps your bow from, I mean, it moves the whole thing, but at least it doesn't move one strand versus the other. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so then I'm just going to do a little loopy bow. So I just start with, I make my left bow and I have a tail. Yes, they're paint sticks, Melissa. There are 12 paint sticks. They're the five gallon paint sticks that I just glued. Actually, there's 14 total, 12 across, and then I cut two paint sticks. Um, and probably should have done a third one in the middle. Um, but yeah, I just would glue them together. 
sometimes I get ambitious and staple them together, but and then I let it sit overnight. Okay, so again, leave a tail. So I have my left bow and a right bow or left loop, right loop, left loop, right loop. Put one more just for fun. And then I'll leave another tail. And then you can even add a few more tails if you want to. And then I think I'm going to clip that together. I can. Oops, let's do another close one. So let's clip that one from the top. And then let's get out a little bit of thinner twine. If I can. I'll find it all in my mess. Just kind of feeling around here. I know I have a little spool. And then let's get some beads. I'm about out of beads. I'm going to have to order some more. Oops. There went puddles. Well, says so she's done small paint sticks, but not the larger ones. I love the five-gallon paint sticks. Okay, so I have a scrap of the painter's tape over here. And I'm going to create a needle at the end of my twine by twisting some of this tape around the end. You could use washi tape, masking tape, scotch tape. I'm just going to keep twisting it. And now I have a cute little needle. So I might do maybe 12 beads. We'll see how long that is. For these, I believe, are 20 millimeter beads. I get them on Amazon. I think I get a pack of 200. I think this is like my second pack. I think I need two more. Jason says it's adorable. Thanks. Okay, so just kind of seeing how long it will. I think that is pretty good. I might add two more just to lengthen it on each side. Okay, so let's cut off our little tape needle. And I'm just going to tie a knot, a couple of knots in one end. Hopefully it doesn't come out. Okay, I'm going to push those down. I'm going to leave a little bit of slack, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right here, so I can tie, tie it around my bow. And then probably, I should have probably tied the knot, and then it might be to move it up a little bit. Sorry, this part's kind of boring and tedious for you to watch, but... So I'm going to move that up, put a couple knots in the bottom so I don't lose my beads on this end. This stuff is it's fraying. Now 
now. Okay, well, hopefully that doesn't come undone. Okay, so let's add. And actually, let's pull those the smaller bows up toward the top or the smaller loops. And then we'll put our beads behind. And I'm just going to situate it all on the tails that I left here. And I'll try to get all that straightened out. And then just die tight. And then these become another set of tails. You could have also added your beads here, but it was a lot thicker and I didn't want to have to string them. I'm going to just kind of try to straighten it out. I'm going to tuck those maybe. Oops. Okay, there is our little bead, beaded bow. Put these away. Oops. So let's put it this way. And those will kind of straighten out with time. So there we go. Melissa says so cute. Thank you. Let's, um, so it's a new month. So I kind of wanted to show you a few things. So we have some new um, specials this month. Um, so I don't know where to start. Not that one. Okay, so let's start with the color, the new color of the month. So it is called, let me make sure you can see that. Yep. Uh, where am I at here? So it's called Duchess. Oops. Where'd I go? There. So this is available now while supplies last. The first color of the month in February sold out in eight days. Academia last month was around for about three weeks. Um, so this looks, looks kind of like a periwinkle gray color. So you can unlock the ability to purchase Duchess um, after your order of $75. Um, and you can buy up to three, three ounce tubs um, after you unlock the ability to purchase it. Um, the next special is, let's see if it'll switch on me. Um, Oops. Will it? Oh, no, I'll have to keep doing that. Let's. Okay, so then the next special is um, in, under, if you go under special, so go to chocotour.com backslash Robin's Egg Blue Creations. There are two new, um, I can see it on my phone. Is it going to switch on me? Yep. Okay, just making sure it works. So there are two new specials. There is this um, Birds and Bees chalk box. Um, so it is $175. Is that well? I don't I don't know if that's showing me your price or my price, but it comes with uh, the Honey Bee Farm Transfer, which we just used today. Busy, busy, busy. Realistic etched bird cutouts, welcome to our nest and peaceful garden. The surfaces include bird cutouts, the 8 and 9 by 12, the 9 by 12 box frame, the double sided 5 by 7 box frame, and the board 5.5 by 7.5 board and pillar stand. You also get a jar of white paste, a jar of black velvet paste, the jar of bumblebee yellow, and the paste palette pack in vintage vibes. You get a small squeegee, a multi-tool, a duo tone apron, and color trays. So that is what that looks like. It's a pretty good little bundle box. Okay, so then the next one is the vintage farmhouse chalk box. So here's what it looks like. Let me back that off a bit there. Ooh, that 
Oh, th these are all four retired transfers, by the way. Um, so you get, hey, y'all, bless our home. Um, the groceries, the mercantile, and the sheep, which all come from the corner market collection. You get a 12 by 18 Aiden. You get a two pack of the 17 by 17 square pillow covers. You get a 9 by 12 pallet sign, and you get a 5 by 7 pallet sign. You also get the everyday home pallet pack, a jar of black and a jar of white. You also get black ink singles. And then you get an ink mat, a small squeegee, a multi-tool, a duo tone, tone apron, and color trays. So again, these five transfers are all retired. So keep that in mind. Let me go back to see if there are any. Hello, Miss Kathleen. Um, so then what it, and then I want to show you. So those are the two new chalk boxes. So then let's go to the Club Couture transfer for this month. Sorry, I don't I didn't have it after May. These just came out posted this morning. Um, but I'll have graphics made. So this is this month's Club Couture transfer. So here's what it looks like. Let me blow that up a little bit. So it is this farm fresh organic transfer. And it comes, the three paste singles for the month come of the month are bark, black velvet, and sage. Um, so this is a three month minimum commitment to sign up, but it is a DIY monthly subscription kit that comes to your mailbox every month for $21.99 US or $27.99 Canadian. Uh, again, you can sign up for three months, but then you can cancel any time after that three months. You do get a, as a club member, you do get $5.99 flat rate shipping on all orders. Uh, so that is, those are the specials of the month. Let me go back to here. So let's just, and again, my apologies if my camera starts to wig out. But this is what we made, this honeybee farm. It is uh, 14 paint sticks, 12 paint sticks all together. Um, and a cute little twine and beaded bow. And then I also used um, a penny tile mylar stencil for the bottom. Let me just give you some rough. So it is about 17 by 21 total. Melissa says she loves it. Kathleen says very cute. Okay. So here it is again. Dun, da, da, da. Super cute. I love it. The bad thing with making cute like things like this, you don't ever want to get rid of them. <laughs> but I can't display everything. Okay, so I will be live again on Monday. Make sure Monday evening, 7.15 p.m. Central Time. Make sure you come check out my page on Monday and Wednesday mornings because both of those mornings I have Happy Mail gift away posts. So if you check in on those posts, then you are um, automatically entered for that evening's live Happy Mail gift away um, giveaway. So just make sure you're checking my page Mondays and Wednesday mornings. I hope you all have a great weekend. Um, be safe. If any of you were in the path of last night's storms, I hope you are all okay. That was quite spectacular to watch. I probably was not spectacular to experience. But have a great weekend. Um, let me check. I see one more comment popped on. Melissa says, have a great Saturday. You as well. So have a great weekend and I will see you Monday evening and thanks for watching.